So where to from here? Well, as I telegraphed at the start, I'm not really sure. Certainly, policing has some decisions to make. And if the profession chooses to embrace the learning organisation, then I would suggest that there is a need for someone to hold that story arc and to keep the profession honest about the extent to which it's engaging in deep double-loop thinking, thinking about its assumptions, systems thinking about symptoms and embracing novel ways of thinking about other things. And as I've said before, we've seen pockets of this, and that's encouraging. But learning is easily derailed. So these are opportunities that need to be seized upon, lest they remain piecemeal while the bureaucratic beast grumbles on. Perhaps there's a role here for collectives like CIPA, perhaps for professional bodies like the College of Policing, and perhaps it's for our respective governments. For me, of course, there's a role here for leaders. Because I think if leaders can focus less on being leaders and more on creating leadership, we can start moving towards the cultures and systems that we need to foster learning, transformation and agility as a result. Now, I'm not so naive as to recognise that this is obviously much easier to say than it is to do. And I recognise also the sinking feeling that accompanies this for many senior leaders who think, oh great, that's something else I've got to do. Certainly choosing such leadership will vex many of our people. It will involve disappointing those who have spent a lifetime schooled in the language of leader as all-knowing boss. Those who say, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. And those who find sanctuary in the formality of bureaucratic structures where there's a command order for everything and arse covering is the biggest game in town. Such leadership may cause us to radically rethink how we staff our organisations, whether we want to retain everyone for 30 plus years, whether everyone needs to go to the academy, whether our police officers should look radically different from the way they look today. And it, almost, it would almost inevitably lead us to start thinking very differently about our position in the system, perhaps with a conscious shift upstream, to tackle complex problems as multi-agency flash teams, for example, instead of retaining our organisational boundaries, funding and policy KPIs, which in turn would undoubtedly vex our political stakeholders and their community investors, who despite our efforts to build organisational legitimacy, legitimacy remained a bit suspicious of policing, its motives and its ability to reach. Which all starts to sound a little bit like the elephant we don't want to eat, even if we do it one bite at a time. So let me finish by relaying some advice that a colleague gave me as I attempted to balance my idealism with a heavy dose of realism around this issue. Not every change we make has to be grand. It could be as simple as choosing to listen instead of providing advice in that, encounter with that, ne that next encounter with a subordinate or choosing to invite different voices and left-field thinking into that meeting, or choosing to own that next stuff up and truly using it for its learning potential instead of only doing so whilst after we've already put someone's head on the spike. But we do have to choose to make that change, and that, undoubtedly, will take courage. Thank you.